Okay. Then the Count, uh, talking to him in secret, asked him, rather intently, where was he from, promising that nothing of evil would happen to him uh, for this. If simply who he was, who he had been, he would uh, produce it for him, who he was, give him the name. Which when he was doing this, manifesting that he was a minister of the king, he responded, and I, through each of your responses, I knew that you were not a countryman, someone from the country, and now indeed you are worthy in death, because all the brothers and all of my relatives died in that battle. Nevertheless, neither did he kill him, uh, lest he prevaricate or waver in his promised um, the promising word that he gave him his fides. So then he healed, and then he sold him to a certain Frisian of London, but neither by him um, nor when he was being led uh, was he able in any way, all the tennis, uh, to be tied up. But when one and another type of chains the uh, his enemies placed upon him, I guess it's the enemies from that battle he'd been in, and, uh, and the people who now owned him, um, and when he saw this, the guy who had bought him, that he was not able to be prohibited in chains, he wasn't able to be bound up and tied up, he gave him the faculty or method of uh, redeeming himself if he was able. Now, from the third hour, maybe at the third hour, when they were accustomed to be the masses, uh, most often this was when his chains were loosened. Uh, but he, having given an oath that he would return, or for himself, he would send uh, the money for the ransom, he went to Kent to King, who was the son of the sister, his name's Holothery, um, of the sister of the Queen Adel Thredae, or whatever, above whom we've spoken above about, um, that he had once upon a time, he had been a minister or servant of this queen. He sought and accepted from him um, the price of his redemption, and as promised, he sent it for himself to his master. And he, who after he'd reversed to his fatherland, and he'd uh, reached his brother, he replicated everything in order that had happened um, to him, the adverse things, and uh, which things had helped in, in as a solace in these adversities. And he knew, with his brother referencing these things, that these had been especially, in those times, the uh, bonds had been loosened in which the solemn celebrations had been for him of the masses had been held for him. But also there were other things which to him in his Pericles, in his um, peril, uh, had happened that were um, convenient and prosperous to him through the, his brotherly intercession and um, from the heavens in this offering of the health-giving host. So that's um, taking uh, the uh, thing they have at church and the wine and the um, biscuit thing the wafer, uh, he understood that these had been gifts for heavens, and uh, many had been by this man spoken, and many had heard them, and they, they were burning in the faith, and with a devotion of piety to a prayer, and of giving alms, or offering uh, victims or sacrifices to God, of this sacred offering type, for the uh, snatching away of those who had uh, migrated from this world, uh, so they've died from this world and gone to heaven, so for their um, salvation. For they understood that the sacrificium solitare, it's a neuter sacrificium, so it's got the E adjective, so this healthy sacrifice uh, was strong enough or prevailed for re redemption and for the soul and the body eternal. This history to me even, certain people of those who, from the man himself, in which these had happened, uh, they heard it, these people indeed narrated. From where this, 
which uh, clearly I've discovered, uh, indubitably, I believe, should be inserted into our ecclesiastical history.